Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to create a blueprint which allow you to quickly populate your scene with selected assets without increasing draw calls. For that we're gonna use hierarchical instant static mesh and if you're developing for VR or mobile I think it's a great tool to have it. Ok, I'm starting in an empty project where I just created two directories for maps and blueprints. Let's go to blueprints. First we're gonna create struct with like just basic functionality and later we're gonna add it more. So right click, go to blueprints and select struct. Let's call it f underscore, I don't know, asset data. And open it. First variable gonna be transform. Then we will need static mesh. Let's call it mesh. And find for static mesh. Let's add count. For this we're gonna use integer vector and then let's add uh, offset. For offset we're gonna use uh, vector with float. Let's compile it, save it and then we can close it. Now we're gonna create our blueprint. Let's select blueprint and choose actor class. Let's call it BP array. And inside variables, let's create our created struct. Call it asset list. For this we have two options. We can have simple array or map. I more prefer use map because the, if you have like multiple assets you can specify like string in a key and then it's much quicker to find what you're looking for if you want to make adjustments. So let's change the string and map and now we will find our created struct f underscore asset data make sure it's visible for instance compile and save it now if you're gonna drag to the level you can see we have asset list let's give a name and all variables we, which we just created okay let's go back to BP array everything gonna be running on construct script so let's jump to it a bit messed up. Let's construct script. Okay, so first let's drag our created variable and then get values. We're gonna loop through every asset we will add to this list. So we will use for each loop. Now if you're gonna split, we, you will, if you break this struct, you will get all data. Let's add hierarchical instant static mesh. And then for it, we can promote a variable. Just call it like current and make it shorter name. This will allow like add hierarchical instant static mesh. It allow to dynamically add components. It's it for example you can go to add components and look for hierarchical static mesh, but this will limit only for like how many components we will add and we want to have like dynamically running so like remove this one and use this instead and actually we can immediately promote set transforms from our 
asset list data. Okay, let's add set static mesh. Set static mesh. For that we can use actually later we will need this data in multiple areas so we can also promote a variable. Let's call it current data. we can split it and connect this transform from here let's grab it back split pin and then select our mesh okay now let's add count for like now we can actually test the compile save it let's bring some models let's find some chairs I already downloaded before, so let's just add it. Let's go to our blueprint. Select. Now you can see that we have all zero. We should set default value to one. Otherwise, we're not gonna be visible. It's not gonna be visible. And it's still not spawning. Let's double check why it's we adding we set static mesh okay compile save actually we can just drag again from scratch go to our blueprints drag to level create new one let's call it chair it's not adding let's see why it's not adding looping okay we create setting static oh i forgot to add ins instance for it so let's grab our current instance and make sure that we add instance now if i will compile it will drop error because it's missing transform so let's quickly create transform compile save and now you can see that we have our chair but of course all functionality still need to be implemented so we'll go back to bp array actually first we can update default value for count go to default values what is count let's set all of those for one okay now let's compile save it and we can close it and now next time if we're gonna drag this blueprint it's automatically when we're creating one of instance it will have default value to one it's don't have oh i need to also update compile main blueprint and now if i will drag it it should have by default one Okay, let's drop also our model and go set basic functionality in BP array. Let's make more space. First, we're gonna implement count. So let's split it, break vector. So we have mesh, for example, a box, yes, and we want to add on each one another one so let's loop it through count x axis i'm gonna look for for loop of course we need to subtract one and then add the last index not first one now to figure out this like size of box we can use our mesh and look for bounding box get bounding box 
if you will split it then you have minimum and maximum value so if you subtract from maximum minimum you get exactly size so we can split it because at this moment we're using x axis and now if you take index and multiply by its width by x value you should get like exactly offset now let's make a vector from location and feed this to its x value compile save now i believe we can go and check if it's working so if i will add two you can see that it's automatically adding of its own width okay let's add it to the rest of the axis we're gonna use same logic so let's make more space we can duplicate this one ctrl d i keep mixing with ctrl w from unreal 4 and now if you will press ctrl w it's like closing blueprint like it's, but yeah eventually i will get there okay let's plug this one now we're gonna subtract from y and we will multiply this time with oh okay i made mistake i need to subtract this function because this is our count this is our size we're multiplying index with our size then let's connect to our y we can duplicate it for z this is going to multiplication and now we're taking our z count and plug in here now it should work across all axes don't forget to connect to z compile save it and let's check it so if like i add more it's automatically updating okay let's quickly recap what we did so we take count we're splitting in each different axis and then we are looping each x individually and then each of each index of this loop we're multiplying by box size like of your mesh it doesn't matter what kind what size your mesh will be it's gonna give you precise precise measurement for it and then we're just adding for like updating on each loop we are updating location for its instance okay now we can add offset for this so let's take our current data offset we can break vector and we f I think we should add before we multiplying so let's create add node let's quickly check if I'm correct or no let's reset this one let's make it free now if I'll start yes correct now I can like offset let's set it to the rest of axis let's add y and also z Okay, now we should have across all axes. Let's test it. And on top we have transforms which gonna give us global offset of asset. If you have like multiple objects, let's add another one. Let's give it a B. And let's actually bring a new model.
so now you can use like transform for global offset if you want change it like individually also for example if you use like scale to minus you can change direction and i found that if we adding transform not on a component but like inter like insecting in this area on like instance transform that then it's like flipping normals so that's why i put it transforms like on when we adding component so let's reset this one okay let's see it's getting a bit messy but i think we should be okay okay now let's add um, individual transform for instance let's say i have those three chairs and i want this middle one to have different rotation or like offset for that we will need to create another vector not vector i'm sorry struct let's go to blueprint select struct and call it f underscore instance the instance transform or better instance data if later we will want to add like more information for it for that we will need to have let's go to our first gonna be id for instance this we will need integer and then select transform File, save it we can close it I'm creating separate struct because inside our current asset data struct I want to have like array because you want to have like multiple assets maybe you want to change it so now let's add one more variable let's calling instance data or instance transform And now let's find our created struct instance data and change it to array. Compile it, save it. Now we're gonna need to compile our blueprint. Now we can see that we have new struct. All this we're gonna like individual transform for instance, we're gonna make after we have like all instance in level so this is gonna go when we complete this like first loop so let's go for loop for each loop I'm gonna go when it's completed and now if we break this struct we can see id and transforms let's find our current component and look for instance we can see add we're looking for update instance transform or do we have set no i think we can use update instance transform but first we need to add its already existent transform so let's get it transform let's find instance get instance transform and then we will need to add this one to our current one but first we can connect id which exactly we want to change it since we can't like add transforms we're gonna need to split it so let's split then we can split this one as well we can add vectors we can split this one 
rotation you also can't add so we're gonna split even more let's add it Now make rotator. Okay, connecting. And for scale, that's thin. Actually, we don't wanna add with the existing scale. Scale we want to have individually. So let's just take our transform scale and plug it. And make sure we're connecting this one. Okay, let's compile and test it. If we go to our chair, now we can see instance transform. So let's add it one. And in here, we can specify ID, which one of those, and also transform. So let's say I want first rotate for, I don't know, 45 degrees minus, yes. And then if I will start changing ID, then it's going across like which one I want to specify. For example, I want to add one more. Let's say now third one and change like its scale. Or like position. Okay, let's say I would like to remove this middle one chair. Let's update our uh, first data asset data okay let's add one more variable and call it remove instance for that we will need just integer and also let's keep it array because we probably want to um, remove multiple assets Let's go compile it, save it. Like why you want to remove? For example, you building like, let's reset, I will show you example. Let's say we have large amount. Uh, let's also remove all our changes. And we can delete table. Let's say we have all those nine seats, yes? And in the middle one, I want to add functionality and like it's gonna be interactive. So I want to remove and add not like static mesh, but like movable if it's gonna be changing or like some animated. So for this reason, you probably want to have a possibility to remove it. Okay, so we also, when we finishing our individual transforms we can take our remove instance for loop for each and when we're gonna complete transforms we can connect to this one also we're gonna need current component let's find instance remove remove instance and then let's say add element which is gonna be id compile save and now if i will go to remove instance let's add and look for this middle one like here i just remove middle one and now i can like take exactly like for example if i have skeleton mesh some functionality with this I can place it manually in this area okay let's compile it save it okay we have set it count we have we can now manually remove individual instance or change transform let's add randomization for transform for that we will need do we need yes we will need to add extra variables go back to our data asset data 
and add seed. So like you can have different seed for like location, rotation and scale, but let's keep it simple and use one for all of it. We're gonna need integer, but just single. Then let's add minimum and maximum transform. So transform min, let's select transform, then add maximum transform. Okay, let's compile it, save it, go back to our BP array. So where we should add, I think we should, yeah, I believe it's on individually, so let's take our, let's break first our transform. This is, can, it's gonna be a bit messy because we will need to add a lot of variables, also break our maximum. Then we will need seed, but this we set later. So let's break our split location. Okay, let's look for in range. Random float in range, in range from stream. Okay. We can promote stream to variable. We have minimum and maximum. We will need to duplicate it for all axes. And of course we can use same stream. Let's set it our stream. If you go, we want to set after like on each asset differently so let's make more space take stream and set a seed set random stream seed can connect seed compile save it okay now we can make vector Combine all those. And this we will add after this one. So let's add vectors. Compile, save, and now we can go and test. Let's say we can add minus 100. And also add positive on this one let's ignore Z for now it's messing up a bit okay so now you can see it's giving randomization and if you change seed it will variate let's finish it with by adding all like rotation and scale for that we also gonna need same approach like split it all of it let's duplicate it make sure we're connecting our stream this is one i was mentioning before that you can have like different seed for like different location rotation and stream but then you will need to add more variables in our uh, in in f asset data which it's like will give you more control if you want for example if you're happy of location seed but you maybe don't very like like rotation so you can have separate variables for that but for now we just use same let's split it our rotation let's set all minimum then maximum okay and now we can make rotator and then we can plug in rotation 
rotation and same will go for scale just duplicate make sure we're connecting stream this to our scale value okay compile it save it and go to check okay I have some error oh okay forgot to connect stream now it should be working perfectly okay let's try to add some rotation so minus 180 and maximum 180 also we can change scale so yeah everything seems working again for scale maybe you would like to set different that it's scale only on like one X because now it's well because it's giving you like different scale like maybe you want to have a uniform scale where it's scaling equally now it's like randomization like from all like different free access but this you can update if you need specifically okay let's double check let's recap we're taking we're setting streaming seed like before we spawning component yes then the seed we're gonna use for get random float in range from our minimum and maximum transform it's, and then we adding to our like instance transform it's getting a bit messy but I think it should be okay okay if you're still watching like we created maybe not the most easiest and simple blueprint but it will give us a lot of like power by populating our level so let's add more content let's and test it if we drag our blueprint let's add new asset it's called a you can just drag it let's set count you can actually set it more also we can set randomization maybe we also would like to change scale can actually add rotation on different angles just small amount we can spread it more then let's add one more it let's add randomization actually we don't want on Z can also make global offset and 
now we can quickly populate with random assets and also we have possibility to like remove individual pieces and why why are we doing that actually like if you let's say we have more than what we currently add let's say we have 100 yes then increase this amount We have enormous amount, but like if you go play and like go to stats, and if you see like in mesh draw calls, it's very low. We have like incredible amount of data, but it's still like we using just draw calls for those individual assets. That's and it's also like this hierarchical instant static mesh give you LODs. So like in a distance, all those LODs for single asset will work. So this will give you a lot of power. Like, especially if you're developing for mobile or like VR applications. So thank you for watching and take care.